In this video, we're going to cover how to complete the application for JTED round two. So picking up from our previous video, uh, we will search for the customer that we were working with before. And here we go. So we have uh, David Merritt here, um, whose status is now applicant. So we'll select the name here, and this will take us to our our uh, progress page here, and then we'll select intake, and then we'll select the button complete application with customer. And then this will take us to the first page of the application. And in the previous video, we had a window um, that had the three buttons to send the um, a link to the customer with the application to complete the application or to continue to add customers into the system. And if we had selected the button uh, to complete the initial application with customer, it would take us to the page that we're seeing here. And once we arrive at this page, we have the window for the application consent and a checkbox here. I have read uh, the consent to the customer and they agree to the consent. So this is just a message here to um, you know, let them uh, know and be aware of, and we'll click save here. And once we click save, we will then be able to proceed in the system with the application here. So the information that we previously entered for the customer is getting pulled over here. So we see first name, last name, date of birth, the email address, pulling over along with the zip code. And so we'll just need to fill out the remaining fields here. So we have a drop down for do you have an SSN? In the previous video, we had in the add applicant screen a couple of fields where you could add the social security number. Um, and if you do add it there, um, the SSN will pull over here, but it is encrypted and will only display the last four. And once you enter the SSN at any time in the system, once it is saved and entered, it will only ever display the last four. And so in this dropdown, we have a few options. So we have yes. And if we select yes, then we are required to enter in the social security number. We can enter yes, but I don't have my card. And we can also enter no. But in this video, we'll select yes, but I don't have my card. And so after the email address, we have a dropdown for housing. And we have a few different options here. Uh, no housing and not living in a shelter, living in a shelter in a rapid rehousing program in a correctional facility and stable housing uh, owned slash rent. So we'll select this one here and we'll enter in the address information. And if we select just to, to see, if we select some of these other ones here, so you know, no housing and not living in a shelter, the street address no longer becomes a required field. If we select living in a shelter, um, again, street address is not required, but you are required to enter the organization or facility name. Uh, same if in a rapid rehousing program or in a correctional facility um, is selected from this dropdown. So you need to enter the name of that um, uh, facility. Uh, but the address is not required. But like I said, we'll select stable housing own rent in this video. So after we have our address information, we'll select the drop down for phone access, which we have, you know, have a phone. I don't have a phone, but I have access to making calls and to receiving calls, and I don't have access to a phone. If we select that last one, I don't have access to a phone. That's it. We can select uh, have a phone or the other option. Um, and if we do that, then we will be required to enter the phone number and then the phone type for mobile, home, work, or other. And if there's a, an additional phone uh, number that they have, um, you know, second cell phone, home, number, work, or message only, that can be uh, the number and the phone type can be entered in here as well. So below that, we have our options for marital status. And then we have what racial or ethnic groups best describe you. And we can select all that apply here. 
In our next question, we have what sex were you assigned at birth on your birth certificate? Uh, male, female, and prefer not to answer. Uh, you'll notice if we select male, that that did add a couple questions down here for uh, see, uh, selective service. So we'll get to those in a moment for the option for male. Uh, how do you describe yourself? We have male, female, transgender. I use a different term or decline to answer. Uh, below this we have, are you authorized to work in the US? Yes or no. And then in this drop down, we have select the option that best describes your situation. So we have, I am unemployed. I received a termination notice within the last 90 days. I'm qualified to have a higher skilled position than my current job. I'm interested in receiving training to advance my career with my current employer. I'm employed but need skills to increase my employment options. And I am a youth between the ages 16 and 24 and interested in a training program. We'll select I am unemployed. And our next questions uh, are tied to the selective service uh, that you know populated as a result of male being selected. And so we have a couple questions. Are you registered with selective service? You can say yes, no, or I have a selective service waiver. Um, if you'd like to register with selective service or if the customer would like to register or verify selective service, we do have a link to the selective service website where you can enter in uh, information and confirm um, confirm their you know, registration. And related to that, right below this, we have the question, would you like assistance registering for selective service? So a few more questions in the application. Select any of the following situations that apply to you. And so we have immigrant, migrant, refugee, justice involved returning resident, live in a rural area, none of the above and prefer not to answer. And we do have info bubbles uh, right next to each of these um, selectable options here, just kind of defining you know, what that term uh, you know, is referring to. All right, so we'll select, how about live in a rural area? And then our next question is military status. Uh, do you or your household receive public assistance? Yes or no. And we have a link to see a list of the public assistance programs. If we select yes, the last question um, is hidden for what is your household monthly income. Uh, but in this case, we're going to say uh, no. And then we'll enter uh, how many people are in your household. And what is your household monthly income? And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to make this very low for the eligibility, eligibility check. So uh, once we enter uh, all this information in for the first page of the application, we'll click this button, save and go to next page. And this will take us to the eligibility check. So based on the information that we've entered in the application, the system will check to see uh, based on the JTED round two eligibility requirements, uh, which uh, eligibility criteria the customer meets or doesn't meet. And so in this case, it looks like based on the information, um, this customer would be available for, or eligible for uh, adult or youth programs. So looking at the adult one, we can see there's four items of uh, eligibility criteria. Uh, living in a QCT DIA or COVID impact area based on the address, uh, meeting the low to moderate income guidelines, uh, 18 uh, years or older, and unemployed received termination notice within the last 90 days, underemployed or underrepresented. And so we can see for all of those that we are eligible, uh, and similarly for uh, the youth program as well. So uh, just going back to show you know, where the eligibility criteria is entered in the application. So QCT, DIA, COVID impact, that is going to be that address information that we entered here. Uh, the low to moderate income guidelines, that's going to be checked right here based on the number of people in the household and monthly income. Um, and if we select yes, that we do receive public um, assistance, then instead of meets low moderate income guidelines, it will say, you know, receives uh, public assistance. 
And of course the age is based on the date of birth. But then um, this last one here, unemployed termination notice within the last 90 days, underemployed or underrepresented, that is gonna be tied to this question here for select the option that best describes your situation. And so we can see this is the one tied to unemployed. This is the one for you know, termination notice within the last 90 days. And um, you know, underemployed and underrepresented uh, in these you know, remaining ones here. Let's see. Okay, so uh, going back to our eligibility screen here, we'll select that this customer is in category one. So we'll continue with the application. And we'll see that we have uh, three more tabs to go through in the application. The first question being, do you have a high school diploma, a general education development, GED certificate, or high school equivalency diploma, H said? You can say yes or no. And if we say yes, uh, our next question is highest level of education. And so that will populate with the drop down here of uh, high school senior, attain high school diploma, uh, GED, or um, you know, post-secondary uh, selections here. But if we say no, then in this in this drop down, we'll we'll list the um, the grade levels. Uh, you know, highest grade level. You know, up to uh, receiving a GED or high set. So we'll select yes and select degree. And if there's any credentials that the customer you're adding into the system has previously earned, you can enter them here. So for example, say forklift certification. And so we can enter that in and then we can select the date Oops. Uh, with the calendar picker here, or we can enter it in manually when the customer received this credential. And then we select the credential type in this case, we'll do certification. And then we have a question. Do you have work experience in the field that trained you? Yes or no? And if you answer yes, uh, we have uh, one more question. If yes, can you still perform the job you've been trained in? So then we'll click save and we'll see that that gets added into the system here. And for whatever reason, if we needed to delete it, we entered you know, the wrong credential or it was actually for a different customer, uh, we can click this. Uh, delete here to remove that. So then we'll click save and go to the next page. And this will take us to our skills and interests part of the application. And so the first uh, question is, what are three things you would like to get out of the program? And so you will enter those into the text box. The text box boxes here. Below this, we have what kind of work would you like to do? Select all that apply. Uh, again, we have info bubbles uh, defining and you know, providing examples of the different selectable options here. What type of training would be best for you? Uh, classroom instruction or training when I get that I get while on the job, like OJT, apprenticeship or work experience. What schedule are you willing to work? So we got our different options here. And then we'll go to save and go to next page. And this is the last part of the application. This is the current employment status of the customer. So we have our uh, drop down here. Our first one, I have not worked before. This will be my first job. If that's the case, uh, you're good to go to finish the application, save and submit. But for any of the other ones, you know, I'm employed, employed but received notice of termination layoff, unemployed and have been actively looking for work, or unemployed, but I've not been actively looking for work. Uh, we do have, um, we'll, ha we'll have these subsequent questions here to fill out um, the work history. Let's see, so we will begin. Are you currently employed by this employer? So if we say no, uh, if we say no, we get the end date uh, field populating here. But if we say yes, we can see the end date is you know no longer there. So we'll enter in the hourly wage, the employer, the employer name, the start date of employment, job title,
and then the address information of the employer. Uh, then we have the job duties field where we can enter in. Let's see, operate. Other duties at assigned. Then we'll enter in the hours work per week. Uh, does or did this job meet your needs? Yes or no? And then we can enter why or why not. All right, so once we have our work history information entered, we'll click save and submit. And then this will take us to our application summary page for the customer. So all the information that we entered on the different tabs, demographic and contact information, education, skills and interest, and work history uh, are you know showing over here. And if we need to return to any of those at any time, we can uh, come back to this page and select this link here. And that'll take you right to that page of the application. So this return demographics and contact info update, that would take us to that first page of the application. Same for you know, our education where we added you know previously earned credentials, skills and interests, and the work history, the page we were just on, that'll take you back there as well. And at the bottom of the page here, um, we can uh, sign the application. So the customer can sign the application. Let me go back to another page here. So when we clicked on uh, the customer's name, that opened up this overview page. And then on the intake, you know, we had the button to you know complete the application. And so going back to when we added the customer in the system with that add applicant window, we had the button that we could send to the customer uh, a link to the application. And so over here, uh, we also have a the ability where you can copy the link. It's link copied here, and you can email it to the customer. And uh, you know, as mentioned before, if you send the link to the customer to complete the application, they'll need to log in with their uh, Illinois WorkNet uh, ID and uh, username and password and uh, complete the application. And they can sign the application when they come down here. Uh, sign as applicant. So let's say, let's say this, you know, login information here. I know this is what I'm currently logged in with, but if this was the customer, they would enter their username and password and uh, click sign. And actually this is displaying because I'm, you know, logged in as the case manager. So, um, so that won't work, but for the customer, you know, so as, you know, signing as the case manager, Let's do that first. So sign as a case manager, S Merit, this account I'm logged in with. We see it refreshed. And then we see the case manager signature name and the uh, date it was signed. And that operates the same way uh, for uh, the customer you're adding. So, you know, they'll see this page. And, you know, when they click sign as applicant, you can, or they will, you know, enter in uh, their information there. And we also have the option to, so you can, um, you know, sign, you can, let's see, from here, you can send the link to the customer as well. And, you know, they can sign it with their username or password. Uh, you won't be able to sign as the applicant because you're, you know, logged in as a case manager. Uh, but additionally, um, you can, if there was a paper copy of the application and they sign that, um, you can select upload signed application and you can choose a file to upload in the signature date here. And that will also work for signing the application. And additionally, you can print it here as well. So we have the button to print and a button to return us to the intake page. And in our next video, we're going to go over how to uh, complete the rest of the intake process.